Good evening and welcome to RFL. I'm Andrew Whitman. Richard French on assignment tonight. He will join us live from Charlotte and the DNC in just a few minutes. This is day two of the Democratic National Convention. Last night's highlight, a keynote speech from First Lady Michelle Obama. And tonight, former President Bill Clinton takes the microphone. Lots of excitement brewing in Charlotte. We go live there now where ABC's Karen Travers joins us with the very latest. Good evening, Karen. Good evening. Tonight, Bill Clinton will remind Americans of the economic prosperity of the 90s and why President Obama, not Mitt Romney, can make that happen again. Thank you. He's one of the most popular Democrats, and tonight, former President Bill Clinton will be called on to rev up the party faithful. President Clinton uh, has an economic record second to none. He's a very credible messenger. The Obama campaign hopes Clinton's speech can pull in skeptical voters, the ones who may not be sold on the president right now, but aren't quite ready to make the switch to Mitt Romney. President Obama and Clinton have had a rocky history. They famously clashed during the 2008 Democratic primary race. But with the lowest pre-convention popularity of any incumbent since the 1980s, the current president could really use the former president's help. Clinton currently stars in a new ad running in battleground states, his first of the election cycle. President Obama has a plan to rebuild America from the ground up. We need to keep going with his plan. Officials say Clinton's speech tonight will remind Americans of the thriving economy during his administration and how Democratic policies can bring back prosperity. But does the Obama campaign run a risk with that trip down memory lane? The danger for President Obama is that a lot of people might wish that Bill Clinton were president again. Because after all, things were a whole lot better when he was president than they are today. Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel, who worked in both the Clinton and Obama administrations, disagrees. Former president who's very popular, who we will talk and explain about uh, the policies and the parallel uh, tracks that the two presidents have had, I think he can do nothing but help. Bill Clinton may be the president's best messenger right now, and the Obama campaign is counting on the man from hope to give just that to frustrated Americans. Reporting live from Charlotte, North Carolina, I'm Karen Travers. Now back to you. All right, Karen, thank you very much. Now, here is why this week is so critical for Barack Obama and his reelection campaign. We're just 62 days away from Election Day, and the poll averages have Obama and Romney in a dead heat, though not on the electoral vote column, though the New York Times' forecaster estimates that Obama is still ahead. Let's go back to Charlotte right now, where RNN's Richard French is standing by live with uh, more on what the game plan is going to be for the Obama campaign and the convention tonight. Good evening, Rich. Good evening, Andrew. Thank you. And in fact, I'll reference a little of what you did last week in Tampa. And I want to bring in my next guest for a little bit of comparison as to then and now. I'm not sure from current TV. And uh, you were in both places. We've only had one day, and obviously uh, the second night here, gaveled in a couple hours ago. Comparatively, the vibe, if we're going to start off that way? I mean, comparatively, in truth, there was no vibe in Tampa. It was a gathering of people listening to a bunch of speeches. This is a party, this is a celebration. There's an energy here that, that Tampa didn't come close to replicating. I'm a little surprised only that I thought when people walked into this place, um, they obviously committed to the candidate, but it's a much different feel. You were in Denver with me. Uh, it's a different, there was the hope, the change, but the expectations now, there's resignations to reality. I don't know, uh, like you though, I thought they at least accomplished what they set out to last night. Yeah, you know, I think that it's, it's like a wedding day in 2008, and then four years on, the marriage isn't what it was on its wedding day. It could still be great, but there's still fissures in it, and there are things that aren't working as well. And yes, I mean, they, they've created energy in here. It's a tighter building than Tampa. It's a smaller building. There are more people here uh, and I think when you have the president of the United States you have a different energy and Bill Clinton I think is going to create some of that energy too I, I do think though that when you see the the way that the Republican Party was fractured throughout the primaries and they're sort of going along with their candidate it makes a big difference this is the candidate of these people in this building that was not the candidate of a lot of people that were in the Tampa Bay Times forum Last night, everyone obviously spoke about the First Lady, and I think University, everybody thought she did a great job, Deval Patrick, so a few others, I, I think, um, separated themselves. However, to me, there was a video montage that played um, probably in the 8 o'clock hour, which nobody at home saw. But for the first time, I think, it tangibly articulated what Obamacare actually did. And it really showed one kid, I think with lymphoma, um, who's... You know, HMO was saying basically you've hit the cap here, you're almost on your own. 
Right. And then the new legislation said no. And the coverage continued, basically saved the kid's life, and also, obviously, um, his family um, identified that as well. Why hasn't anybody been able to do this with these guys, with hundreds of millions of dollars? Why has it taken a video buried in the 8 o'clock hour to finally articulate what it well, is? Well, I think it's more than just a video, Rich. I think it's the, the idea that this they decided that they want to own health care, that they want to throw long on first down, to use the opening day of football season uh, analogy. And I think that what they're saying is we own it. We're calling it Obamacare now. We're not just saying it's the Affordable Care Act. You know, we're not playing defense is what they're saying, is what the Democrats are saying. So once you own something and you're comfortable with that, there's a great deal of facility that you have with it at that point so that people can start hearing the anecdotes and seeing the seeing how they resonate and be proud of it you rather than scared. think we're going to see that for the next 62 days? I, I think absolutely. I think that if, if, it's, if it started at the very beginning of the convention, it's going to keep going. And I think finally they're also realizing that Romney care, as it was, is a tool that the Democrats Democrats can use. You saw it there with Ted Kennedy and, and Mitt Romney talking about it. it. wasn't about it was about abortion, but you see that they're starting to use the past in that video. I'm referring to a video of Ted, a debate yep. between Ted Kennedy and Mitt Romney. They're starting to use Romney's past and his recorded past to show that hey, this guy is, is on the same page as we are. We are bringing health care to America. Let's be proud of it. Um, Speaking of Bill Clinton tonight here, uh, I just get a kick that it's an unvetted speech here. So as much as everybody's going to be interested to hear the comments, you can just imagine the handlers over the campaign saying, oh, my God, what's he going to say? Um, what's your expectation? A, will he stay on message or will he ramble if you go back to the 80s here where they almost right. cheered when he stopped talking? Yeah, I don't think it's going to be like his speech at the uh, when he gave the keynote. I do think that, that President Clinton is going to come here to mend some fences with some people that he distanced himself from. Uh, and, and in the you know in the Obama family and rightly so I mean he was he was advocating for his wife who was running against Barack Obama I sort of understood it then but he still has fences to men he's also the most popular figure in America in politics so today he got an overall rating of 69 percent approval with women 73 percent which is amazing when you consider that the thing the marks yep. against him have everything to do with what women would think of him however uh, Bill Clinton is a beloved figure in this hall. Whatever he says is going to be greeted with a lot of excitement. So I don't think they're they're going to have the you know Clint Eastwood was the last guy to give an unvetted speech. Yes. So I don't think we're in that territory. And with no Bill empty Clinton. chairs tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no. Empty hey, chairs. Michael, great job, Richard, man. Thank you so lot. much. Yeah, Absolutely.